Hello and welcome to the launch of the Shaw Audio Ecosystem, which is a complete end-to-end -end audio solution for conferencing. I'm Rob Smith. I'm talking to you from the Rose Shaw Centre in central London. Uh, shortly, we will be splitting up into groups for the various languages we're covering today. This is a really exciting launch for us. Uh, it's the first time we've done a virtual launch uh, for a product range of this scale, so I hope you enjoy it. Good morning. Welcome to the virtual launch of Shaw's new ecosystem. Uh, we're here live at the Rose in London. It's a pretty strange atmosphere as there's uh, nobody else here. London's pretty much deserted and it's the first time we've done a launch like this. So thanks for tuning in. Um, this launch is being done across Europe, um, in Germany and France as well. Um, so ignore the German and French guys for now because they won't be part of this uh, presentation. But um, to introduce everyone, uh, you've already met Rob Smith, who's the director for sales in Western Europe. My name is James Hill. I'm the director for sales in UK and Ireland and presenting later on this morning will be Andrew Francis, the manager for applications in the UK and Tom Coleman, the engineer for application systems in the UK. At Shaw, we've always pushed to bring new innovative products to market. In recent history, Shaw introduced a new class of conference microphones, the Microflex Advanced Array Portfolio. Unequaled in design, performance and support, MXA microphones surpass customer expectations. End users, consultants, and system integrators alike have all embraced the MXA family, and it's without doubt the most adopted microphone in corporate spaces today. It's fair to say that with the advent of the MXA range, microphones came of age. However, the introduction, introduction of these game-changing microphones illustrated just how archaic off-the-shelf DSP treatments of microphones were. Shaw once again innovated, this time in DSP technology with the introduction of the Intellimix P300 conferencing microphone processor. A hardware processor that easily handles this new generation of microphones while providing ease of deployment and simple connectivity for conference spaces the world over. The Intellimix P300 also bought Shaw networked audio encryption between the microphone and DSP for those users concerned about keeping conversations private. Again, another industry first. The MXA910 and the MXA310, along with the P300, have changed the way front-end premium conferencing is accomplished. But Shaw is driven to push the boundaries even further in everything we do. Today, you will see an innovation in DSP processing that once again turns industry expectations upside down. As we introduce some of our new products today, you'll also see some, some, some familiar hardware, but you'll also notice that a fair bit's missing. In fact, you might notice that several hardware system components completely missing. A new era in conference room audio is here, using components already found in the conference space. Utilizing the computing power built into the existing in-room PC, that runs the soft codec, Shaw's new Intellimix Room application handles all of the conferencing audio processing required. No more need for bulky rack mounted external DSPs, instead the audio processing lives on the soft codec PC. Modest PC requirements include Windows 10 Pro operating system, four core i5 processors with eight gigabits of RAM and a solid state drive. The very same requirements typically as the software based conference platform that you're using, for example, Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Shaw will also look to capitalize on the success we've had with our array microphones by introducing new form factors in the MXA line. Many times a table array or the square ceiling array just doesn't work in a particular space whether this can be due to ceiling type, the design philosophy, or simply the architecture of the building. Today, as we present our new portfolio additions, you will experience a new array microphone form factor, the MXA710 two foot and four foot linear array microphones. Yet we know that the conference room of the future needs an end-to-end -end solution. So today you will see and hear another innovative solution that completes the audio signal chain, a new Dante enabled, POE network ceiling loudspeaker, the Microflex MXN5C. The old bulky amplifier for the loudspeaker is now gone. It's a thing of the past. A POE switch simply connects all the endpoint transducers and it's all just software in the middle. Imagine the possibilities. You will see how Shaw has once again changed the game. I hope you get excited about these products just as much as we have developing them. There'll be a Q&A session at the end, but you'll be able to ask questions via the portal from now on in. So please 
fire your questions at us and we'll endeavour to answer them all. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Andrew and Tom and thanks for tuning in. Thank you, James. And thank you to everybody watching us talk about the launch of our new Shaw ecosystem, which is a vision for a holistic end-to-end -end audio system from a brand that you trust. So Tom and I are gonna run through the products which make up our Shaw ecosystem, which not only includes our existing MXA 910 and 310 microphones with the P300 processor and Intellimix room, but now we're introducing into that family the MXA 710 linear array microphones, the MXN ceiling loudspeaker, and our new MXN button. All these devices live in Shure Designer, which we're gonna have an overview of how to configure and commission all these devices, and we'll take a look quickly at Intellimix Room as well. Intellimix Room is our digital signal processing, which has come out of our P300 processor to take the same audio quality processing and move it into a software environment. What this means is you can seamlessly integrate it into soft codecs hosted on a Windows 10 environment, which means you can take audio directly from our microphones into your PC without any additional black boxes to do the processing for you. It's scalable with eight or 16 channels of microphone processing, so suitable to small, medium or large rooms. As it runs on Microsoft's Windows 10 platform, you can see some devices here which it's compatible with, as long as any other device which meets the minimum hardware specification. We're going to have a look quickly at how Intellimix Room with Designer can be set up and suitable for starting with a small huddle room. And I'm going to switch now to showing you Shaw's Designer product. Here we have Shaw Designer, which I've previously created a project for called our ecosystem launch. I can see in the bottom hand corner here that we have six devices online, which are all on our table. And I've created two rooms for us to put these devices into. Let's start with the roundhouse room. And now on the left hand side of the screen here, we can see that we have our six devices live on the network and I can identify them so we can see which ones we are working with. I'm going to start with a very simple system using our two foot MXA 710. We'll be using it in the wall horizontal orientation. Uh, and because it can be installed in a table or on the ceiling or on the wall, you do get the choice of which orientation you wish to install it on. And we'll pair this up with our Intellimix Room DSP software. Now that I have those two components in the designer window, I can hit our optimize button here, which automatically creates audio routes between the two devices, turns on mute synchronization between them and puts in some of our recommended audio settings, which really speeds up the commissioning of this room. Here we can see a confirmation that the room has been optimized and those default values have been set in the devices. We've got the four audio routes from the two foot array into Intellimix room, one per lobe. And we have the return feed, which aids the autofocus technology to keep focus on who is talking at that particular moment. If we look inside the Intellimix room component, we can see we've got 16 available microphone channels. And we also have our eight program Dante feeds in. On top of this, we've got the virtual audio input, which represents audio coming from the far side of your conference, as well as the physical input from that PC. The microphone input channels all have their parametric EQ, echo cancellation, noise reduction, and gain control applied per channel, which is then auto mixed together and then sent to the virtual audio output channel, which is where the audio from your microphone enters your soft codec application. From the output side here, we would be using the PC output because we don't have any dedicated loudspeakers in our system. And here we can select any output devices which show up on that PC. So that's a very quick overview of how you would start building a small huddle room very quickly, very easily using a two foot MXA 710 and an Intellimix room instance. So Tom, I think you're gonna add some devices to this now and start looking at a larger room. So let's have a look at the new MXA 710 microphone. 
Well, going back in history a little bit, ever since the MXA range first came out, people asked us, do you have a smaller version of the MXA 910 or can we mount it somewhere slightly different? We even had people saying, can we mount the MXA 310 on the wall? Well, now we have the perfect uh, middle ground here in the MXA 710. It's a new form factor that costs less. So we can now mount this microphone in either a wall, ceiling or a table, and it's available in a two foot or a four foot length and comes in three colors, black, white and aluminium. This here is the MXA 710 in the two foot, and this one, of course, is the four foot option. Like the rest of our MXO ranges, uh, these microphones feature the steerable coverage technology that you've known for many, many years. The two foot array, the front one again, has a total of four lobes available to it, and the four foot array has a total of eight lobes. In terms of speaker distance, or talker distance rather, the two foot array, you'd expect to place your people about one to five meters away from the microphone. The four foot array would be about two to six meters away from the microphone. So that should give you an idea of how larger rooms you could start to specify with these mics. As well as the steerable coverage technology, all the microphones have the autofocus technology as well. This is the technology where once you've aimed a lobe at someone, it will gently begin to track them as they start to move around within their local vicinity to make sure you get the best audio possible. Sure Designer software allows us to use some default room coverage templates and been built into both microphones, we have the IntelliMix DSP suite that you would know well from the MXA 910. This includes automatic mixing of the lobes generated in the microphones, as well as acoustic echo cancellation, noise reduction and automatic gain control. Like the rest of the MXA suite, uh, we, but all of the, both of these microphones already use just one single category cable to provide control, power and audio. So they're powered on power over ethernet and use Dante and AES67 as the networked audio protocol. Like the rest of the MXA range, they have an LED status bar with configurable colors and brightnesses, and you can make them be on or off or flash, whatever you want to do. They also have the shore to shore audio encryption feature built into them too. As we're going to show you in a second, we will use Shure Designer software to add them to locations and projects and set the microphones up. They will also be visible in the Shure System On uh, asset management software for um, remote management and troubleshooting too. Here are two images to show you to give you an idea or a flavour of where the microphones can be used. On the left hand one, you can see the microphone is being suspended from the ceiling. And in the right hand picture, you can see it's uh, just mounted to the left hand side of the screen there. So very, very flexible operation here. Included in the box, because we love accessories, uh, is a wall mounting bracket at the bottom. We've got a wall cover plate for wall surface mounting and as well as the eyelet screws for suspension mounting. That's the stuff you get in the box. Optionally, though, you could have this uh, desk stand to allow you to place it on a credenza or a surface, for example. There's also a ceiling bridge to allow you to put it in a drop tile ceiling. We also have a flush mount kit that can be used in either a wall, a table or a ceiling as well. Another mounting option is the visa mount on the back. This is a visa B mount, so you can use like a mic bracket adapter or any kind of visa B mount that's available to you, which is 20 by 50 millimetres. So this is how you might want to mount the microphone. This is the microphone placed underneath of a screen. You could equally place it over the top of a screen. Or here's the two foot array being used on the side of a screen. And using the included eyelet mounts, you could use some wire and then mount the microphone on a ceiling like this. Here's a picture of the uh, MXA 710 in the flush mount bracket already in its vertical orientation, so probably mounted in a wall. And lastly, this is the flush mount bracket in a table. But in addition to this, we've covered the mount, sorry, the mount and the microphone with some acoustically transparent uh, material to give you an idea of what that might look like. So you can hide the microphone within the table if you chose to do so. Let's flip to Shure Designer and we can see the mic in action. So here we are in Shure Designer and I'm going to use the two locations that Andrew set up a little while ago and add one of these mics into each of them. Let's start with the smaller roundhouse room. So we open this location 
and you can see on the left hand side in our online devices we have the MXA 710 two foot array. I'll quickly identify it and you can see one end of the mic is flashing. Flashing at my end here. Yeah, thank you. So that's the one I want. I'm just going to grab that into my design and it said how are you installing it? Well I'm going to use the wall horizontal for this one. Let's add the device this time. Let's have a look straight at the coverage for this microphone and go to the coverage map. You can see here we've already uh, added in the background image for this microphone. So I'm going to place the microphone here uh, just under the display. So there we go, grab the microphone there and then I'll rotate it around. Oh no, I'll rotate it around, there we go. That's close enough for now. And you can see that we've got three lobes pointing into this room. So I'm just going to tidy up lobe two, point that in the middle, bring lobe one nicely in and lobe three in there as well. So you can see that coverage would work really, really nicely for a room of this shape and size. Let me go to the other room and we're going to add in the longer array into the roundhouse room, so the barbican room. Let's get that screen open. There we go. So you see the two foot array doesn't appear here because that's already allocated to a different location. So let me grab the four foot array this time. No need to identify it. Dump that in and this time I'm going to mount it in the ceiling to show you how the array uh, coverage looks different. I hit add device, adds the device in for me. Let's go to coverage map and you can see here, let me get rid of this little screen as well. I'm going to drag the microphone into this, the center of our table here, representing it being mounted directly on the ceiling. There we go. And if I click off it, off it you can see where the lobes start to point. So I'm going to drag those lobes a little bit toward the end, tidy it up a bit, drag that one in the middle. You'll probably see as I move these and as I talk as well, you'll start to see some of the lobes adjusting. That's the autofocus working its magic. So it's centered on a given position, but then adjusting itself to where I'm pointing to right now. And that would happen to all the lobes at any one point in time as well. Okay, so let's have a look at the innards of the MXA710 and the four foot one that we have open in this location right now. So click the configure button. And for those of you who've used MXA before, this screen should look pretty familiar. The channel coverage will look different, of course, because it's a very, very different form of microphone, but the channel strip is gonna be pretty much exactly the same. That's the channels page, and we've now go to the Intellimix page. Again, this will start to look familiar where you've got the ability to choose where the channels go and how they operate, whether they have AGC switched on. And on the Automix output, you can see here the Intellimix suite featuring the acoustic echo cancellation, noise reduction, a parametric EQ compressor, and delay available to you as well. So that's a quick rundown of the new MXA710 microphones, and it's back over to Andrew for the next thing. Thanks, Tom. We're now going to look at the other end of the signal chain, which then completes the Shure ecosystem with our new MXN 5WC Power Over Ethernet ceiling loudspeaker. The MXN 5 is configurable in Shure's designer, making it very quick and easy to set up and integrate with the rest of the audio system in your room. You can monitor it using this system on audio asset management software. Because it's part of our ecosystem, we can now send that encrypted audio from the microphone to the processor and then onto the loudspeaker. It's very sleek in its industrial design. You can see here it's just a very neat and tidy white circle that blends seamlessly into the ceiling. The grill is magnetic and therefore removable, so if you need to custom paint the microphone you can do that. The Shure logo is magnetic as well, so if you want to make it completely indistinguishable from the rest of the ceiling, we can unbrand it. It's rated UL2043 for plenum spaces. We're going to be offering a tile bridge accessory for quick and easy mounting. And connectivity is one single port Cat5 PoE, which is matches the rest of the MXA family and eliminates the need for a dedicated power amp to drive a loudspeaker. So we look back at our huddle room, we can now see that we've added the microphone into the rest of the system via the PoE switch, which makes for a very sleek and neat and tidy installation for the whole audio system. If we scale this up, we can start to see that we can use two ceiling loudspeakers, again, hanging off that one network switch, and this scales up incrementally into however large a space you might need right up to and including something which could include three MXA 910 ceiling arrays and requires six MXN loudspeakers. That is massive. It's a big space. 
So let's go back to Designer now and have a look at how we can configure this with the rest of the audio system. Here we can see that we've got the existing IntelliMix Room DSP installation. We also have our two foot MXA 710 loudspeaker and adding a ceiling loudspeaker to this uh, project is as simple as dragging it from the online devices list, placing it into the workspace and hitting the optimize button. Because we now have a known Shure microphone working with a Shure DSP, working with a Shure loudspeaker, we can tie all these devices together with one click of the button. And now we can see the audio route completing from the microphone to the DSP and out to the loudspeaker. If I double click the loudspeaker, we can look at some of the other parameters. So we've got our two Dante inputs. Uh, one is gonna come from our IntelliMix room PC, freeing up a second input, which could be used for something like a fire alarm evacuation notice. And on the loudspeaker itself, we've got some processing available. We've got some delay, so that if you're using multiple loudspeakers in a larger room, you can delay the sound so that it sounds like the audio is coming from the front of the room and not immediately from above. We've got a signal generator to identify and test the loudspeaker, a parametric EQ, and a limiter. And finally, and of course, we have an independent output volume meter. So it's actually got some quite nice little tools in this loudspeaker being more than just a driver. If we jump to the coverage map now, we can see that we've got the microphone lobes that we've added previously. I can turn those off using the new layers feature and I can drag the ceiling loudspeaker anywhere I want into the room, which shows on the content centric circles, your minus three, minus six, and minus nine decibel down point at one kilohertz compared to the center of the loudspeaker. So we can see here that this one loudspeaker in the middle of the room above the table gives us ample coverage for all the participants in that space. And that's really it. That's all you need to do to commission a loudspeaker in the Shure ecosystem. The MXA network mute button is the last piece of the puzzle within the new ecosystem we're launching right now. The MXA 310 has always had the ability to be muted locally, but the MXA 910 and now the MXA 710s will need some form of control, particularly when you're using it with the Shure DSP processing. So we can now take the mute button and have that control directly on the table. So there's a picture of how the mute button looks when it's inside of a table and would use Shure Designer software to set up and configure the button. And it also ends up in the System On portfolio as well. Like the rest of the portfolio here, uh, this button is PoE powered, so one single category cable uh, used to connect it up. And it's got third party control strings available to it, so you can use it with other third party devices or have it controlled by something else if you chose to do so too. Like the rest of the MXA microphones, there's an LED built into it, built into it rather, and you've got the same typical colors and you can have it either off, on, or flashing in the way they used to. And the mute button can be either push to talk, push to mute, or the good old fashioned toggle. So you can see these uh, pictures on the right hand side of the, the whole unit. But I've just dismantled my micro uh, microphone button here. So you can see the two component parts. You drill a hole and then screw that part into the table. And then this part it goes over the microphone button like this. I line it up carefully, screw it on, and then this little uh, cable here will plug into there. And then this uh, network jack plugs into the network like that. And in a second or so, it should start to power on for us. I'll now show you how we use it in Designer. We're back in Designer now, and I'm going to show you how we get the MXA mute button to control our new microphones here. I'm going to revisit the roundhouse room that I set up earlier with just my single MXA 710 microphone. Double click it to open it. I'm going to maximize the screen so it's neat. And you can see on our online devices, I have a total of two MXA mute buttons, one either side. I want to get this one in here. So let me identify them and see which one it is. No, no this is my the one. other one. So let me grab this one in here. And you can see we've got these mute button connections. So I'm gonna add the mute button straight onto the MXA mute. This will tie the two devices together and make the mutes synchronize with each other. So as I press the mute button here now, you can see the mute status on the microphone follows as well. And the audio output from that microphone mutes. Yeah, that's true, thank you. I'm just gonna move that one up there. I'm gonna add a second microphone in, the MXA 710 four foot array. This also has a 
uh, mute, mute input on it as well, and I can wire that input mute onto there as well. So now this microphone should control, sorry, this button should control both of the microphones. There we go, so you can see both microphones are running simultaneously. But in a room where we needed two microphones like that, we'd probably need more than one mute button. So what I'm gonna do is add in the second mute button here. And if I complete the wiring, excuse my, this is annoying my OCD, it should be neater than this, but close enough for now. Uh, if you had more time, you'd wire it up properly. So now uh, my microphone button should mute both the microphones and also the microphone button on the other side. And should I can join the party. There we go. Yeah. So they all work in conjunction with each other. Let's have a quick look inside of uh, my button here, the one um, next to me. You can see it's on mute here already, so I can unmute it from there and all the microphones follow too. I just want to have a quick show you of the light section. So you can change the colours, as you would imagine, to the typical uh, colours we get from the MXO range. So my microphone mute button now has gone blue and you can change the microphone and whether it's on or whether it's flashing in either state, of course, as well. And lastly, with the logic control, how do you um, uh, have a toggled section or a push to mute or a push to talk available to you as well. So there we go, that's the new uh, network mute button to complete the MXA range. Now that we've had a look at each of our new products, the MXA 710, the MXN loudspeaker, the MXA mute button and the IntelliMix Room software all in their individual components, let's have a quick look at how simple it is to get all of them working together as a complete room system. Let's revisit our Barbican Room project. And we can see, first of all, we're gonna verify that all six of our devices are online and ready for use. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take a look at the coverage map and orientate my microphones. So I'm gonna grab the four foot MXA 710 linear array and place it in the wall horizontal orientation at the front of the room. And we can see I just need to rotate this around a little bit to face into the room. There we go. And it's gonna sit in between those two screens there. So now we can see that the default coverage pattern is great for the members of the table at the front, but it's not quite reaching everybody at the back of the room. So let's add the two foot ceiling array at the end point of the coverage and now this time we're gonna place it in the ceiling orientation. Now, between the two, we can see that all those room participants are being picked up equally well. And I can turn off the coverage of each one and clean up the workspace with our layers feature. The last thing we're gonna to add to the layers and the room coverage is my MXN loudspeaker. Here we can see if we place it right in the center of the table, Everyone around that is just about within the 6 dB down point. Um, it might be a case now that we could consider adding a second loudspeaker if we had one, one at the front of the room and one towards the back. But for our graphic today, we'll use the one right in the middle. That sounds good to me. Now we've got our coverage sorted out. We can jump back to the routing page and add the extra products into the mix as well. So our loudspeaker would live on the right-hand side at the end of the signal chain. Our two microphones would live more towards the left, which would be the beginning. And we've got this nice space in the middle now. We can add our IntelliMix Room DSP. There we go. And finally, it's quite a large table in our room, so we're going to use two mute buttons, one for the crowd at the front of the table and the other for the crowd at the back of the table. So let's simply grab both of those together. So does, does that mean you don't need to use a control system no. in this system now? No, we don't need any third party control to tie all the functions of the mute button, the auto mixer and the LEDs together. It all happens now with our magical optimized button. Cool. So I'll hit that now and we get the readout to tell us what's going to happen as part of that process. And now you'll see that all the audio routes are established one by one for the microphones. We get an output from IntelliMix Room into the loudspeaker and we get our two microphone uh, control buttons into the software here and all of them are tied together with the one button. And this is all we really need to do for about 95% of the conferencing rooms that we would be specifying equipment for. That's pretty quick. 
very quick indeed. So there we have all the new components of the Shaw ecosystem, and let's not forget the others being the MXA 910 and the 310 and the P300, which completes all options for all the microphones and processes you should need. Thanks Perfect. very much. Thanks very much for that, Andrew and Tom. Hopefully that gives you a flavor for our new products. Finally, an end-to-end -end solution that ensures the audio signal chain is built for optimum performance. We're proud to be able to offer microphones, DSP, in both hardware and software formats, and Shure software to design, monitor, and control audio. This enables system integrators to deploy audio systems quicker and easier than ever before. No other hardware, software platforms offer quicker out-of-the-box configuration. The optimize audio button is just simply a thing of beauty. We've also worked very hard to ensure our products are certified and we will continue to do so. Risk is minimized as there is only one contact point for the entire audio signal chain. Gone are the days of DSP manufacturers blaming mics, loudspeaker manufacturers blaming amps, etc., etc. It's all on shore and we've got you. And that completes the presentation, so thanks for listening. We've had a few questions come through during the presentation, but please keep them coming and we'll get through as many of them as we can. All right, everybody, we can see lots of questions coming through here. So James, would you like to pick one at random and we'll try to answer it? Yeah, we've got a few coming in uh, off the Q&A session and in the chat. So if you've got any more, please try and make them come in through the Q&A uh, window, which makes my life a little bit easier. Um, and one that's come up a couple of times is, can you share the presentation? Uh, yes, we certainly can. We can give you access to a PDF version of the PowerPoint and we'll send the link out after the live stream. Okay, and ag again, this has come up a couple of times, and it, it, it's, I'm not surprised at all. Uh, a couple of people are asking if we need to be certified to install these new products. Yes, ideally, there will be a, a new SAI course to do with this as well. So an SAI course for the MXA 710 specifically, and also for the ecosystem products you've just seen as a whole, so how to set them up and how they all work. Okay, so I think it's safe to say that anything in the MXA family requires certification, yeah, which that's is true. the bolt-on of the existing MXA stuff. Correct, yeah, exactly Great true. stuff, hope exactly that answers true. that one. Uh, next one, I'm going to try and race through these so they're coming in. Is the speaker plenum rated? Yes, the speaker is plenum rated. I think it's UL2043, but we can send that specification out and it will be on the website. Okie dokie, thank you. Um, a couple of people looking for some pricing on these new products as well. Um, I think we can speak about that a little. I think you're the best person to speak about that. <laughs> um, I, I would say how many do you want, but uh, I, I won't do. I think we're looking at around £2,300 for the MXA 710 four-foot array. Uh, one eight list priced for the two-foot. Uh, the Dante loudspeaker uh, list price is 400 And the network mute button comes in at a staggeringly low £300 list price. Much cheaper than a control system. Exactly that. Um, <laughs> interesting one, actually. Is, is, there, is there a dummy MXA 710 available so that if somebody mounts one vertically next to a screen, they can put one on the other side to make it look uh, a, a bit more aesthetically pleasing? Yeah, that's a great question. <clears throat> yes, it's not available yet, but yes, in time there'll be dummy versions available. So if you have a single screen with um, one microphone positioned uh, to the left or the right, you can make it look symmetrical and Good nice stuff. and balanced. So yeah, there will be dummy versions available. In two foot and four foot? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Good stuff, okay. How can we get a live demo, gents? Uh, shortly after the presentation, in the next week or so, we will be having the mics that we've got on the desk here installed in the office. And from that point on, we can host live demos over whichever your codec platform of choice happens to be. Yep, I think it's fair to say we'd have liked to have that set up at this point, but obviously with COVID, it's been a bit problematic trying to get into the office to uh, install kits. So bear with us and uh, as soon as we've got that availability, we'll get that out to you and, and we'd encourage you to, to bring your clients to it and have a look at yourself as well. Um, regard the network mute button, are there any plans for alternate versions that don't require a me mechanical fix to the table, uh, surf mount, surface mount PoE and a battery Wi-Fi? version oh that's a good question no this this is the only button we've got available we just figure it's with um it's a nice solid mount to go through the table and be on poe all the time means you don't need to worry about batteries running out and that kind of stuff and just having having it wired is one less wireless device to have to worry about in that situation so yeah this is the the only variant of the button okay um Question here says, I know you can assign two IP addresses to the one CAT connection, but is it possible to VLAN tag these connections? Uh, no, it's currently not possible to apply VLAN tagging to the 
uh, network output of the networked devices. You can have an IP address in different subnets, but they must live on the same layer two VLAN. Okay. Um, what is the Dante output in the speaker for? That's a great question. Thank you, James. The, th this really comes down to acoustic echo cancellation. With the, with the acoustic echo cancellation, the closer you can get the reference signal to what is coming out of the, the loudspeaker, the better and, the, and less the AEC channel will have to work to, to get rid of the, the echoes. So that's why we have a Dante output. So any processing that may be applied with the loudspeaker, including volume changes and the like, you can just take that Dante virtual output, if you will, and feed that back into the processor. So that way you get an even more accurate example of what's coming out of the loudspeaker for the benefit of the acoustic wow. echo Yeah, you, there are some networking advantages of having an output from the loudspeaker too, because if you're running or attempting to run a network which is only unicast Dante streams, then if you're transmitting from uh, an Ultimo 2 chip device, you will run out of flow count pretty quickly if you're trying to address multiple loudspeakers. So to get over that, you can go Ultimo chip to the first loudspeaker, second, uh, first to the second, second to the third, and so, so on. So like a logical daisy chain. Yes. Gotcha. It, the unicast flows. Excellent, thanks for that. Uh, going back to the MXA 710 linear array, if the Conor microphone, uh, my questions are coming in too quick for me to keep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. If the Conor microphone is mounted below a screen, how much is the recorded sound influenced by people sitting behind each other? Is it better to mount a column higher up in that instance? That's a good question again. I'd, I'd say this just comes down to acoustics in general. If, if, for, if for any microphone, if someone is between you and the microphone, then that may well impede the sound quality. Uh, I guess it depends on how reflective the room is to how much the room might, might compensate for the sound. But generally, if you get line of sight between yourself and the microphone, you'll be, you'll be doing your best. So maybe that would be a case of having the microphone above the screen so everyone is more visible yeah. to the microphone. And also, if you're mounting a camera, above or below your screen, typically cameras tend to be at a fixed height. So it's more important for camera height to be at eye level, whereas the microphone can be higher or lower with less impact to the far end. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if this one is just in relation to uh, designer or IMX room, but it's asking, is this integration available for wireless mics? Uh, the P300 processor and Intellimix Room are both Dante products, so any wireless microphones that live on the Dante network, you can feed into them. Um, MXW and ULXD and Accent Digital are not currently available in designer, so you won't at the moment be able to build those quite as easily as you can with the MXA family of mics, but you can get the audio from one product into the DSP. Yeah. And then apply that processing manually. Okay, so we've got a couple more that have come in and they look like they're IMX room specific, so uh, we're on topic. Is the PC purely for setup and not required in a permanent installation? Yes, the, the, the PC that we've been using to set all this stuff up is representing the, the PC that the integrator would have. So they would come in, do their design work there, push the design into Intellimix room on the local Nook or whichever PC you've got running there. So yeah, the designer PC is very much separate to the Intellimix room PC. Good, that's pretty clear. Um, and so are there any subscription or renewal costs for the licenses with IMX room? Yes, IMX room is licensed at either three or five year terms, and you have the choice of eight channels of processing or 16. And obviously eight channels at three years is cheaper than five channels at five years, um, and they are renewable. So at the end of your contracted period, if you wish to continue using that product, you have to renew your license. Good stuff. And I think it's, it's, it's a good time to point out that if you want to trial it, we can get you a license to, to try IMX Room. So just get in contact with us and we can get those across to you. Uh, and also you can download and install Intellimix Room for free on any machine that meets the minimum hardware specification, but it won't output any audio. So you can get audio into it, you can look at the processing, but you won't be able to actually use it live in a production environment. Perfect. Thank you. Um, regarding the Dante loudspeaker, can we go into the speaker specification a little more? Frequent response, also PoE or PoE plus? I'll answer the first bit of that. Um, I can't remember the frequency response off the top of my head, but it's very appropriate for the application. Um, the, the manual is live on pubs.shore.com, so you can nip there and via, via the website, you'll be able to find the user manual for that, where those um, device or those specifications are, well, specified. Uh, and is it PoE or PoE Plus? It is both. It will recognize the power available to it from the switch and choose the most appropriate one. 
Excellent. The new products, uh, are they similar to 910 and 310 and got MTR certification? Uh, they currently do not have MTR certification um, because Microsoft Teams Rooms specifies and certifies against primarily a USB connector. So the P300 and the ANI USB are certified. And when they went through that certification process, they did it with the MXA 910. So we were, are in the procedure of revalidating the P300 with 710s. More of an upgrade of the certification, if you yes. will. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that all products existing and new that aren't going, aren't certified are, are in that process at the moment. So. Yeah. Um, do you have a Dante enabled lectern mic and how would you mix that into the ecosystem to host the Intellimix software? Okay, we don't have a specific Dante cabled lectern microphone, but we do have wireless versions in the MXW and ULXD range. Um, how would we mix that using our DSP? In the new version of firmware for P300, you've got direct outputs from the auto mixer, which you can choose whereabouts along that signal chain you can take your sound from. So you can have one version of the gooseneck mic going through the echo cancellation noise reduction for conferencing, and then a second feed through taking those processes out, which would be more appropriate for room reinforcement. In addition to those, if you didn't want to use a wireless option, you could use a wired gooseneck and plug it into like an ANI 4-in XLR and get it, on the, get it on the Dante network that way and then process it in precisely the same way that Andrew just described. Excellent. Um, and I'm sure everyone wants to know this. When will projects be available to purchase? Uh, I'm going to throw that back at me. Question. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be uh, available in the very near future. We'll be uh, releasing further information on that in the next couple of weeks. So um, as soon as we've got that, we'll let you know uh, and we'll, we'll release it in the same information as uh, where you can get demos, etc. So we'll get that to you as soon as we can. Um, which microphones are you using for this presentation? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely sure, Mike. <laughs> yeah. No, we're using Axiom Digital for the wireless and I'm on a Twinplex. Yeah. Wireless lab. I've microphone. got a twin plex mic lab here that's so discreet I can't even find it. Let alone. Now you're, now you're <laughs> rustling your mic so to you everybody are. in the world. Yes. Uh, and I have an MX150 on an Axient Digital wireless body pack. All being auto mixed and processed by P300. Yep. Uh, what contingency can be set up if the DSP PC fails it with power? Can we use another PC to host the Intellimix software? Want take that one? That's a good question. Um, Basically, IntelliMix Room will run only on that one single PC. So, and typically for, uh, for IntelliMix Room, <clears throat> that PC will be running IntelliMix Room as well as the video conferencing software platform you're running. So I guess you could have a backup PC, but you'd have to have a backup PC for every single room in that environment. Yeah, and the Zoom Room would, would drop offline and you'd have to reconnect. Yeah. So. so it's not like a typical DSP where you have a redundant pairing backup. It's more like that room has gone down temporarily yeah. because yeah. it's a PC based issue. Okay, and, and that rolls ne neatly into the, the next question really. Aren't you concerned about Windows PC being the audio host in the room and therefore subject to updates, restarts, failure, leaving the room dead? Uh, it's the same thing. That, that, that logic applies to, are you happy to run a Zoom room on a Windows 10 PC? It's exposed to exactly the same yeah. risk. Yeah, okay. Will there be an app version of the uh, mute button? Um, there's not going to be an app version per se, but one thing I will mention again is that there are control strings available for the mute button. So you can um, can control the mute button via other devices. And in the, the, they're exactly the same kind of control strings as you see for other short bits of kit. So yes, you could use a, a different panel to uh, help control the mute button or be controlled by the mute button as well. But in terms of a, an app for a device, no, there's not one of those there, but control strings available. I mean, it might be that you wanted to have a dashboard for a room yeah. where you would have mute buttons for the whole estate yeah and you could tie the state of those buttons into a dashboard yes okay hope that answers that question um a few people have asked if this webinar will be live uh, will be uh, put onto the web at some point of course we'll get that up at some point today or at least this week um, so as, again we'll let you know when that goes up um how resource process demanding is the intellimix software on a minimum spec requirement pc would it be recommended for the Intellimix to be the only running application or can you run multiple applications simultaneously, such as UC platforms? 
Okay, so the, the design intention of IntelliMix Room is that it is running as a Windows service. So it takes up like baseline resources of that PC. So it's very happy to run other applications at the same time. And if we're benchmarking the PC performance at the minimum specification, IntelliMix Room at full processing, doing everything it possibly can, takes up about 10% of resource. Mm, that's true. I think in addition to that, the, the PC requirements and specifications that derived by Shaw were based off the Zoom Rooms PC. So it's like they, they took a, a higher spec for those and so we actually need less than that. So yeah. if you're going to be running those soft codec systems, then the PC dedicated for that service will be able to run IntelliMix Room as well. Excellent. And the mute button syncs uh, with the Teams and Zoom and, and your other uh, UC applications? Yeah, it's going to be the processor that does the synchronization with the with the third party soft codecs. And again, it's the mute button that syncs with with the processor. Yeah. So the when you mute the button, it will tell either IntelliMix room or the P300 or the any USB matrix. Yeah. I'm in mute state. So then that device goes into mute state. If you're using any USB or P300, that command is replicated over USB and into the soft codec platform. You can do Zoom Rooms uh, mute sync, but there's some script you need to run in the background. And if that's something you want to do, you can contact us and we can help you with that. Yeah. Cool. OK. The PoE speaker, what's the output power of that? Uh, I read this question and I've got the specification here. Um, so at PoE Plus, we're outputting 98 dB SPL and at Power Over Ethernet, we're doing 92 dB SPL which should be loud enough for any conferencing room, I would imagine. Yes. I'd like to think so. Um, the IntelliMix, bit of a question on that. Is there a renewal cost if I used a P300 processor instead of IntelliMix room? The P300 has no licensing at all. That's a one-time purchase fee to buy the physical piece of hardware. So no, there's no licensing cost for the P300 at all. Excellent. Can the MXA 710 be mounted on the ceiling at any angle? level on the horizontal plane in relation to the table and still tune the lobes? Or does it have to run in parallel to the table the orientation? The question, uh, the guy that asked the question is thinking of aesthetics when installed on tiled ceilings that run diagonally to the table. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think it's similar to the MXA 910. We were asked when the MXA 910 first came out, can we mount it at any angle? And the answer is, well, from a physical point of view, yes. The challenge is gonna be how it manifests in the software and how you would then program it. But with the MXA 710s in particular, they have been designed to be pretty much chuck them on a surface and they'll just do their job magically anyway. So yeah, in, this, in the software, they are designed to be mounted 90 degrees or perpendicular at least. Yeah. But yeah, you're more than welcome to hang them at whichever angle you choose. Yeah. In terms of performance as well, the difference between the lobe steering on a 710 versus a 910 is you can only steer the lobe in the one plane and you can't select up and down. So it would actually be much easier yeah, to diagonally right. mount a 710 versus a 910 because you only have that one direction That's of like steering. That's like a windscreen wiper, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, if you need to put third-party Dante audio sources into the system, will we have to use Dante controller? Designer is used only for the routing of shore-to-shore -shore devices that are currently um, housed within Shore Designer. So yes, if you, you're more than welcome to put third-party or other Dante inputs into the, either um, the ANI USB, P300 or IntelliMix room. But yes, the question writer is correct. You would need to use Dante controller to uh, establish that route. But the devices with. all show up in Dante Controller as any other device would. Yes, of course, yeah. Okay, with a NUC PC typically only having one NIC, is any specific network configuration required to support IMX Room with both Dante traffic and connection to client LAN network to support soft clients? Yes, we get asked this question quite a lot. And the simple answer is in this network topology, we would recommend a USB 3 to Ethernet adapter specifically for the Dante network, because it is most likely that the onboard NIC will be associated to the corporate LAN. Okay. Um, another straightforward one here. Intellirim mixes room is required, but how would this work on a Cisco hard co codec and no in-room PC? That's a great question again. Um, <clears throat> I remember the, the launch of IntelliMix Room at ISE and lots of people, we were kind of thinking, oh, this is going to be the best thing ever and it's a great piece of software, but it's more a case of, hang on, which one do I need? Am I using a soft codec in the room or am I using a hard codec in the room? Because if you're using a hard codec in the room, IntelliMix Room isn't going to be the device for you. 
It's only going to be a case of I using a soft codec in the room with an in-room asset. Yes, I am. OK, well, let's make use of the processing cycles on that PC that you've already bought with some licensable software. So no, you wouldn't use IntelliMix room with a hard codec. No. Good stuff. And while we're talking about that in-room PC, how are we going to track Windows 10 updates in terms of compatibility, security, performance issues, etc.? So our IntelliMix rooms uh, developers have access to what will be the next Windows update to ratify the software against. Uh, so that does minimize the risk of doing Windows updates with IntelliMix room. However, it's not going to be 100% reliable and 100% perfect. Um, as with any software, you can't guarantee every parameter going. I think that's a fair answer. Um, there are now appliance-based Zoom Room devices, uh, if, for example, the PolyX30. How would Intellimix work with an appliance-based device? Um, if the PolyX30, which is not a product I'm familiar with, if that is running Windows 10 as its underlying operating system, uh, and you can install additional programs on that PC, then you can run IntelliMix Room with it. If it's a closed device that's running some kind of Android uh, operating system, then IntelliMix Room will not be available to you. Just double check the hardware specifications of that third party yep. PC as well to make sure it meets the minimum spec. <clears throat> so Win Windows 10 and minimum hardware specification can run on any device. Excellent. So uh, I, I know that you just quickly uh, checked on the, the power output of the speaker. Uh, since then, somebody's asked for the dispersion angle of the speaker. Have you seen this question come in? And, and uh, I have. At minus 6 dB at 2 kilohertz is 180 degrees of dispersion, and minus 6 dB at 10 kilohertz is 107 degrees. You didn't search that. You knew that, didn't you? Obviously. <laughs> You're very good, Andrew. You're very good. Um, final few questions. Um, any plans for a sandbar in the future? Uh, Sure, product development has a long roadmap ahead of it. Uh, we are currently considering all options for future developments. Um, that's all we can really say. Perfectly diplomatic answer um, and one that I'd encourage. Uh, how many mics can a P300 ha handle? Uh, and the, 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 uh, the uh, person who asked this question has is, is got an auditorium with perhaps 25 locations. Wow, that's a huge that's a huge area. The P300, how many mics can it handle? That's a good question because it has a total of eight microphone inputs. How you spread them across various microphones would be up to you. You could have eight um, analog then Dante conversions going on for those up to eight channels, or it could be a single MXA 910 with all eight lobes going into it. So yeah, the P300 can handle up to eight microphone channels yeah. off however many microphones you need. So theoretically, you could do eight off eight mics, so 64 lobes? Yes, with an MXA 910 or the 710s as well. Yeah, good stuff. So you can't put the Dante network switch on the corporate LAN? Uh, you absolutely can put Dante network on the corporate LAN if that is your network topology. Uh, you may need to get into looking at quality of service and DSCP values to ensure that you've got reliable Dante network clocking to get your audio in sync across your network. Um, but if you can put those tools in place, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever why you can't merge Dante and corporate network traffic together. You need to make friends with the IT department. Okay. Good luck. Is there an app for iPhone, Android for muting at all? Um, no. No, there's not. No, the, like I said earlier, the, the mute button is the only way to do it physically with, with this infrastructure here. Or we have the, the command strings available to and from, well, the mics directly yep. or the process directly or the, um, the mute button too. Okay. Um, it looked in the demo as though the setup is a lot easier out of the box than previously, for, uh, previously available. Uh, is this something Shaw have worked hard at? Yes, very much so. <laughs> Mainly it's been me and yes. Andrew and all of our colleagues saying to them, can you put that button there? That would be much, much, much easier in that way. So yeah, the, I, I'm, I remember testing this a couple of weeks ago and I thought, wow, it really is that easy to set yeah. this stuff up. I've done a number of demos now and it, it just works out of the box, which I is great. I think we're pretty fortunate in that we take customer feedback very seriously mm -hmm. and we have a direct channel up to the product development team. So any, any comments that we get for product improvement get filtered up very easily. Okay, Agreed. and finally, last question I've got here, is audio encryption now included across the whole signal chain? Uh, yes, it is, and it's activated at the location level within Designer. Uh, you can manually input a 
encryption key in or the system can auto generate one for you. Uh, and that will be the same encryption key from the microphone to the processor of choice, be that P300 or in Telemix room, and then out to the loudspeakers. Great stuff. Well, um, just, I suppose to completely wrap that up, that is for sure devices only. If you're enabling encryption and then you wish to send Dante out of your Intellimix room PC into a third party recorder, for example, then that route would not be available. So it's all or nothing, all encrypted with Sure or not at all. Okay. That's all the questions we've had. So um, we're gonna wrap up the, the, the webinar now. Thanks ever so much to, to Andrew and Tom, to, to Rob Smith as well for introducing it. And, and, and most of all, thanks to you guys for, for attending. We really appreciate your time. It's a really exciting launch for us. As, as I've said, it's the first time we've got a, a full end-to-end -end solution. Um, it's one that we're very proud of and we hope that you guys are, are gonna see the value of it as well. Um, Demos will be available. Your, your local reps will be speaking to you in the very near future to try and get uh, you to, to, to take a look at these, get these in front of your customers. If you've got any questions in the meantime, please get back to us as soon as possible and we'll, we'll speak to you. We, we've got time on our hands right now with uh, the world in lockdown. Um, and so with that, <laughs> in, enjoy the rest of your day uh, and thanks again. And we hope to see you very soon. Thanks Thank and goodbye. You. Thanks everyone. Cheers, everyone.